Tip number one, you're going to lose all your money. I am sorry. <laughs> oh, that's not really it. I'm... So maybe you just got that 3D printer and have no idea what to do next. Or you're looking to get one maybe this holiday season. I know Black Friday is coming up, and with all the deals out there now on 3D printers, there's not a better time to go get one. Um, don't fret. We're going to talk about some tips and advice for you guys that are just starting your 3D printing journey on the things I've experienced since I started the hobby a little over a year and a half ago. Hopefully these tips will not make you make the same mistakes I did. What's up everybody, Big Jano here. Welcome back to the channel. Before we start guys, I wanna remind everybody I do variety streaming on Twitch a few times a week. I game and 3D print from time to time, so come check me out at Big Jano is where you can find me. For those not on Twitch, I am also on Twitter. You can follow me there at Big Jano as well. I usually post when I go live on Twitch or post new content to YouTube, so don't miss out. Go check me out guys. Now that that's out of the way, let's get into the real reason why you guys are here. Let's talk about 3D printing and what it's done for me since I started the hobby a little over a year and a half ago. 3D printing has been such a tremendous asset for me since I started about 18 months ago. My first opportunity with 3D printing came through my employer, helping them design and prototype various things for the company. Before then, I had no experience with 3D printing and had no idea how the machines operated. Since then, I've been able to grow my skill set and increase my knowledge of 3D printing and ultimately ended up buying a 3D printer for home use. Since then, I've been 3D printing ever since, always continuing to learn and design new things and continuing to learn about these products and machines even more so that I wanted to give you guys some tips and advice for those that are just starting out as well as those that maybe don't know what to do after buying a 3D printer or need help buying one. Um, through my experiences in the last year and a half, I want to help guide you guys through some things that I've learned so hopefully you guys don't make the same mistakes. With that said, let's get right into it. So this first tip is more geared for someone who's still looking to get their first 3D printer um, and are just looking into the hobby. Well, I really encourage that you do the research and do more research and then even do more research after that. I think that's my first tip really is just research, research, research. Um, there's so many different printers out there. There's different kinds of 3D printers. There's FDM printers. There's SLA printers that deal with resin. There are SLS printers that deal with laser sintering that are probably way too expensive for anyone watching this video. Regardless, there's so many different 3D printers out there that you really need to understand A, what you're looking for, and B, what your price range is. Those are the two things that I did when I first started 3D printing that I need to figure out what I wanted to cut out of 3D printing, but I also needed to know what my budget was so I knew I wasn't looking at things that I realistically couldn't buy. And that kind of leads me into a another sub tip of tip number one, is that you need to understand that 3D printing is an investment. It's not just something you can go buy off the shelf and be happy with and be done. Uh, you have the printer, you buy the printer, um, but you also need to buy the material for the printer. You'll have to buy other things for the printer down the road, and especially if stuff breaks, and we're going to get actually into that in a little bit. Um, but understand that it's an investment, and it's if you need a table or if you need ventilation for the printer, depending on what type of printer you get, um, all these things add up over time. And if you want to continue to grow onto the hobby, it's, you need to be able to grow with the advancement of these machines. So understand that it is an investment. It's not something, it's not a one-time purchase. Uh, but the sooner you realize that, the sooner you'll be able to happily 3D print. So by research, I mean go online and check out different reviews of the printers. Go on the company's websites. They usually have a lot of information regarding their 3D printers on the websites. But also go check out YouTube and see various 3D printers and makers and hobbyists in the communities, printer reviews on the printers they own themselves. I myself have made a printer review on my Anycubic Mega X for the same reason. This gives you a great idea of first-hand use from the user of the printer, and it, hopefully most reviews show the printer itself, what they experience while 3D printing with them, and usually cover any issues or troubleshooting they had along the way. Overall, these are a great resource to help you decide what's best for you in when you're buying your first 3D printer. There's even a subreddit on 3D printing on the Reddit website. Seriously, go check it out there. There's tons of information over there as well. Probably more than most people need, but 
still a free resource. Decide what's best for you and what you're looking for and make that decision based on reviews of other people and really just get an idea of what people are experiencing with this particular machine and if it's something that you are comfortable with or you decide to maybe look elsewhere. Uh, but there's plenty of reviews out there on various 3D printers. If it's a brand new printer, there might not be one. Um, and in my case, that's why I made the Anycubic Mega X review on my printer, so that way I can help you guys, especially if you're looking to get the Anycubic Mega X. By the way, that video is linked above if you're curious about the printer. Link in the comments below if you want any more questions on that. Feel free to drop a comment. All right, tip number two. Don't go buying every single upgrade you can think of when you first get your new 3D printer. Most people, when they first buy their 3D printer, like myself, thought that they needed a ton of different rolls of material right off the bat so you can print with all the colors in the rainbow right at once when I first get the machine and I needed the top of the line Bowden tube or the top of the line extruder to help make my prints even better. Uh, no, that's not really the case and all you're really doing at that point at the beginning is just wasting your money. So when I first bought my 3D printer, I bought so many different rolls of materials to print with when the printer came and I realized that I only printed with like two or three of those rolls. I bought like six rolls of material to print with. I wanted to print with all these different colors. I saw some specialty rolls of filament that looked super cool. I wanted to try them. And until you get an idea of how your printer works and the ins and outs of your printer and what your printer is capable of, I would suggest maybe one or two rolls of filament. If you can get one for free with the printer, by all means, that's even better. But until then, don't waste your money on stuff that you don't know if you're going to use until you know your printer is going to work well or not. Now don't get me wrong, there are acceptable reasons to upgrade things on your printer, but save that for after a few months of 3D printing and if you notice that there's a part or component on your 3D printer that is wearing out faster than normal or decides to break, then replacing it with a much better part than what the stock part was will help the efficiency of your printer and will be able to keep the longevity of your printer going for a longer period of time. But don't do that right at the beginning when you still are trying to figure out your printer. I recommend you guys save some of that money not used on frivolous things to save for parts on your printer that absolutely have to be replaced down the road. Because let's face it, things on your printer are going to break over time. There are going to be components that have broken on me too that will need to be replaced on your printer such as fittings, hardware, cooling fans, you name it. Things on your printer are going to wear out unexpectedly, so you're going to need that money to spend on the parts that you need to absolutely replace, rather than spending money on things that you just want to replace for the heck of it. Look, I get it, those multi-material machines are super cool, but you don't need it right off the bat, especially when you're first starting out. I had to convince myself really hard not to buy one of those. <laughs> Which leads me into my next tip, tip number three, expect to get your hands dirty with your 3D printer. Most 3D printers do have assembly required, however, depending on what printer you get and what manufacturer, some printers may come more or less assembled than others. Uh, some printers do have a few parts already put together and you just have to put those pieces together, like my Anycubic Mega X for example. However, there are some printers that you just get the entire kit of every single part and have to put the entire thing together from scratch. Depending on what printer you get, more or less assembly will be required. And you also have to remember that you are going to get your hands dirty, especially when you have to take apart your printer and replace components. If you're replacing components, you usually have to take bits and pieces of your printer apart to get to that specific part that you have to replace. So don't go expecting that you can't touch your 3D printer. Um, I hope I don't want to explain this too much. I hope everyone watching this video already kind of knows that assembly is required on most of these things and getting your hands dirty is honestly part of the fun anyway. Now you don't need to necessarily have an engineering background to operate your 3D printer, but having an understanding of the 3D printers themselves, the understanding the process of how 3D printing works, and maybe even having a small understanding of how machines work in general, will definitely help your 3D printing experience go a lot smoother and help you feel maybe a little less intimidated, especially if you do have to take parts of your printer apart. This kind of leads me into tip number four, and honestly, tip number four kind of goes really great with tip number three. They kind of coincide with one another, and that is to not be afraid to make mistakes. There were so many times when I first started 3D printing that I didn't get something calibrated quite right, or my prints didn't look that great, 
or I had a failed print and I decided to freak out and started questioning, oh no, what am I doing wrong? Or what's wrong with the printer? Am I, is the printer bad? Or is there components that are faulty on the printer? And I had a lot of overwhelming thoughts right when I first started 3D printing. But honestly, those are key to helping you learn how to 3D print better, understand the 3D printing process, and to help you just learn in general and understand where you can go from here. Like I've said in past videos, guys, you ultimately learn by failing. I believe failing is a key component to learning the 3D printing process even more and to understand your 3D printer and the ins and outs of how things work or things that maybe didn't go quite right. It's these failures, guys, that help you understand your machine's capabilities even more, but also make you understand the 3D printing process even more and help you feel more confident 3D printing. I myself, when I first started out, didn't know anything about retraction settings, print speeds, the different types of supports and where they're used. So ultimately learning those things on your machine and how to tweak them just right so you'd get good quality prints every time is really ideal for you to not only understand your 3D printer, but to enjoy it more and more and to just get some really good quality prints out of your machine. And so you can ultimately continue to print with the less likelihood of a failed print. I mean, that's the goal, right? Is to print without failure. This also kind of leads into another big piece of advice I have, and that is to not be afraid to take apart your printer. Honestly, that's one of the things that I worried about most often when I first got my 3D printer, that if I would take it apart and try to put it back together again, that something wouldn't be quite right as it was before, and I'd ultimately break my 3D printer, be rendering it useless and becoming a piece of metal sitting on a table. Honestly, that is farther from the truth. If you have to take apart your printer for whatever reason to replace a component or to unclog your nozzle or for whatever reason, get excited about that because it's another opportunity for you to learn about your printer and maybe understand why the company went the route they did in designing the printer and its components and ultimately give you suggestions too down the road, especially if you're going to replace components of maybe what you can replace that will give you a better print quality or just make your ease of use a lot better. Guys, tech support was created for this specific issue. Don't forget to use the manufacturer's after-sales support to help you with issues with your 3D printer, and they usually can give you a step-by-step -step guide on what you need to take apart in order to solve your issues. Now, I will say support on different manufacturers varies considerably, so do take that in mind when you're reaching out to them. Not all companies are created equally, so just be cautious. I've also found that Facebook user groups on particular printers or machines or companies have also been a tremendous help for me to help me with issues on my printer, especially with the Anycubic Mega X behind me on some various issues I had when I first bought the printer. I joined a community on Facebook where all the people in the community had the same exact printer I did and a few of the people in the community were able to help me address my issues and were help me get back up and running with my printer in little to no time at all. Seriously, it's a tremendous resource Go check it out. These communities are a valuable resource. You get to learn from other members of the 3D printing community who have the same printer you do. And by learning from them and the experiences they've gone through, ultimately you're going to be able to help other people out down the road who are less experienced than you and to help them with their issues as well. And that's what I love about the 3D printing community in general is no matter what skill level you are, there are so many great people out there that are all willing to help each other out and to help them be the best 3D printer they can be. This takes me to my final tip, guys. Tip number five, don't forget to have fun. I know this is gonna sound cliched, guys, but if you're not having fun with 3D printing, then you might need to reevaluate why you're 3D printing in the first place. 3D printing is such a fun and rewarding hobby that I'm so grateful that I got to start this hobby a little over a year and a half ago, starting with just using 3D printers through my employer. Since then, I've been able to hone my design skills and increase my creativity through 3D printing and the many things 3D printing has to offer. There are so many capabilities with 3D printing and 3D printing technology nowadays that who can't be excited for what the future has in store for 3D printing? If you can't have fun being excited for what's to come with 3D printing, then I can't help you. <laughs> but seriously, have fun with 3D printing and you'll thank yourself in the long run. That's it for this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys got something out of this video. Remember to go follow me on the socials, at Big Jano. Come hang out with me, come see what I'm 3D printing, and let's have fun together, guys. Also, if you like this video, go hit that like button above, and if you're new to the community, be sure to subscribe so you guys know when new videos are coming. If you guys stayed to the end of the video, thank you guys, I appreciate you guys so much. 
And until next time, keep doing it big.